All right, so welcome here. We're going to officially do it now. Welcome to this meditation class. Good. So uh, today is going to be, I'm going to be throwing out a lot of information. This is really a beginner's class. So if you have done years of, uh, you know, if you've been in the Himalayas and you've been, you know, sitting with the Dalai Lama and stuff, this might not be for you. This is for someone that maybe uh, has never done uh, yoga, uh, not yoga, but meditation before, or who's done it and has just had a hard time with it, which was me for years. I just, I did not like meditation. I'll get into that in a bit. So anyway, what we're gonna do is talk, you know, the whys, the what, the where's, that kind of thing. Uh, and then we'll actually get into the practice. For right now, don't worry about how you sit. If you want to lay back, you know, if you want to get on the couch with some popcorn, do whatever you feel comfortable. Uh, after we're going to kind of do, do some stuff, take a break, and then we're going to get down to business. Okay, so after the break, that's when I'm going to, I'm going to introduce you guys into the posture, and then we're going to talk about the posture. So after the break, then we're going to get all serious. But for right now, we're just, you know, we're just having a tongue, you know, a, what do they call that, a chin wag. And uh, we're just going to uh, talk about some some stuff. OK, so let me see. I'm, I have my board here to kind of keep me on track because I tend to, uh, you know, go right off. So what we're going to do, first of all, though, before we do anything is we're going to do a quick warm up. So we're going to all do 100 jumping jacks. And no, I'm only kidding. So we're just going to do a quick warm up here and uh, which is we're going to just loosen up a little bit, get a get real loose. OK, so. I'm going to turn, whoops, I'm going to drop my mic to start out with. I'm just going to kick this back so I can stand up. Let me see if you can see my head. No. There I am. Okay, good. Let me move this out for a little bit. Okay. So everybody get, and if you don't feel like doing this, you don't have to do this, but this is just, we want to get kind of loose a little bit so we can get things to flow and get moving, right? So I know that some people are just, you know, your time hours is this is like 10 o'clock at night for you, 7, 8, 9, 10, yes. So maybe you don't want to get too, get too flowy because you're going to have a hard time going to sleep. So do whatever you feel you need to. But anyway, let's start out. We're going to shake it out. So this, uh, the technical Taoist term for this is getting the wiggles out. So we are just letting things go here. We're going to shake it out. Shake out the legs. So the Latin term is the wiggleus interruptus. All right. And then just do a little bit of rotation. So we're always going to start our class with just a little bit of a physical loosening because I don't know where you guys are coming in from. You could be super tensed out and, and, you know, tense or whatever, but it's a good way for us to get on a neutral place. Okay. Next thing we're going to do, this is called Wu Song Shen Fa. And Wu Song Shen Fa, Wu means five. Shen, Song is releasing the body. Shen is the spirit and fa is the energy. So it's five different ways of releasing and loosening energy within the body. We're going to only do one today. And here it is. Let me show it to you. Some of you know this already from my classes, but here we go. Okay. So I want you just to imagine and I hope I don't knock my mic when I'm doing this. But I, first of all, I notice that I'm shifting weight from left to right. Okay. So just going into the weight, we're shifting. So I want you to push that weight down as far as you can and then release it up. Now we're 50 50. And then we're shifting it down to the other side. So up and then down. Up and down. Okay. Now here we go with the hands. So whatever, whatever hand, whatever foot the weight is on, that arm is in the front. We come up, there's the 50-50, and then we drop to the other side. 
Okay, you guys with me so far? Good. All right. So I want you to release the shoulders, the elbows, and the wrists as much as you can. And I want you to imagine, let's say here, your arms were tied, or your, uh, let's say you had magnets here. They, they were magnetically held up, and then somebody switched the magnet off, and whoom, it just goes. Whoom, okay? And as you go down, we are pressurizing that foot, that foot, you release it and allow that wave of energy to come up, and that carries the arms up. We release it down. So it's a little bit fiddly, I know. So up. Good. So now as we start doing that, first of all, we can do it a little bit just mechanically to kind of, you know, figure out the steps of it. But then you begin to release it and feel that nice, the loosening of the tendons, the muscles. So one thing to keep in mind here, watch my elbow as I do this. See how far my elbow goes? So I'm not, I'm not restricting in any way. I'm just letting it go. And also notice how my, my hand at the bottom, it's like a little whip. Okay, so from here, it kind of whips down. And the way that I'm doing that is as I release my shoulder, my shoulder releases, then my elbow releases, and it's almost if you don't have any connection to your wrist at all, it just does its own thing. So shoulder, elbow, wrist. Okay. So this is as, this is as deep as we're going to go into actually what we're doing here. In, uh, you know, in other in next weeks coming, we're going to learn all different things that we're actually doing here rather than just releasing the, uh, the tension. But anyway, this is just what we're working on today. Okay, good. Are you starting to feel, get the wiggles out? All right, now, so I want you just to allow yourself to come forward. So just imagine gravity is pulling you down. Do not force it. And it doesn't matter how far you go down. If it's just to your knees, nobody's watching. I don't know, maybe. But anyway, just let go. Just allow. And I want you to take a big, deep breath as far down as you can go. And as you exhale, I want you to imagine and allow your lumbar, the muscles connected to the lumbar spine, to release and open. So it's almost like your spine is literally falling into your hips, into the bucket of your hips. So inhale and exhale, let it go. Okay, good. And now we're gonna slowly rise up. Good. Very good. And shake it out. Good, and now we're done. Okay, so that's just a little loosening, you know, it wasn't too painful, right? All right, so let me put this back. Rocky's looking at me like I'm completely crazy. All right, and then let me realign myself. Okay, good. Okay. All right, so again, just kind of get comfy. You don't have to be in any particular posture. And let's get into the subject a little bit. Okay, so, you know, meditation, I'm sure you've heard all kinds of things about meditation. And again, I'm just kind of presuming that maybe you haven't really tried it before, but I'm sure you've heard about, you know, some different, or you maybe tried it in some way, shape, or form. There's so many different ways of doing meditation. Uh, there, you know, from transcendental meditation to uh, if, when you're doing yoga, there's a whole uh, kind of uh, meditation practice you can go on. There's such a thing as mindfulness, which is becoming very popular. Mindfulness meditation, which is another way of doing it. Uh, there's uh, moving meditation, 
which is when we are doing Tai Chi Chuan and Qigong that I teach, this is really the, we're, we're moving and meditating at the same time. And it's, you know, so it's another thing, way to do it. Uh, there's other, oh, what other ones? There's walking meditation. Um, so anyway, these are all different uh, methods of, uh, of meditation. So what we are going to learn today is something called Taoist meditation. So I'm just going to put it out there. Taoist meditation, let's just say the kind of the, the thing that makes, you know, the, the, the important thing to know about Taoist meditation is that it uses the mind is absorbed into the body. That's kind of like the big deal with that one. Uh, otherwise, you know, with Zen Buddhism, like you're concentrating with the mind is completely, you know, focused on something. With Taoist uh, meditation, the mind completely relaxes, almost like gives up and it absorbs itself into whatever body part. So that's kind of one of the things. Next week, I'm going to get way deep into what Taoist meditation is. For this week, just know that that's the kind that we're going to be training in. So with that being said, I have my little cup uh, illustration here. I got this wonderful cup. I don't know if you can see it, but isn't that hilarious? So anyway, I got this wonderful cup for my birthday. And uh, so when we come to when we come to practice to uh, to teach or to learn, we like to say that the student comes with an empty cup. Okay, so uh, when you're coming to this practice, I would appreciate if you came with your empty cup. Okay, because I want to fill your cup with the knowledge that I have. And if you come with a half full cup, I can only half fill your cup, which is very sad. So I want you just to allow if you have that cup half full, I want you just to just maybe kind of empty it out and just say, okay, I'm just going to let go of what my conceptions are of it, what it might be. And I'm going to dump that out and just start out completely fresh. Okay. After we're done, you know, down the road, you can say, well, that was kind of good, but I like this or whatever. So, you know, just kind of use this as the empty cup. Just allow me to fill your cup for you. Why the heck not? Right. Okay. So, um, where do we, uh, well, let's say, when do we do Tai Chi or I'm sorry, uh, meditation? When should we do that? Well, it's really up to you when you want to do it. This is a, you know, this is a good time for me to learn it, but it, it's really up to you how it fits into your day. And we're going to get into actually the practice and all that for right now. Maybe you feel comfortable just Am I uh, a thumbs up on my if I'm still sounding good? OK, thank you very much. I love that thumb there. OK, so, uh, you know, maybe this is good for you just once a week right now. That's cool. But I would love to see you starting to implement this a little bit more in your week. How much? That's it's up to you. Uh, how about five minutes <clears throat> a couple times a day or how about 10 minutes? once a day for twice a week. Okay, that's maybe a good place to start. <clears throat> what I'd like to see is just rather than doing my strategy was always like, Oh, I really love that I'm going to do eight hours of it. And then uh, and then I'm completely burned out. And I say I don't want to do that anymore. So I'm speaking to myself as well as you guys. If you want to practice outside of this, start with just little increments. Okay, and then just start to gradually build on that. So uh, when is really up to you and just uh, just fit it into your life where that where it makes sense. You know, obviously, if you have school, you have work and you're coming home for work and you're absolutely beat, then that's not a good time to be doing meditation. You know, so what would be make most sense for you? So that's when. Uh, where where should you do it? Well, we want to do it. This is all pretty simple. Where do we want to do it? We want to do it someplace that we're not going to be disturbed. So if you have a quiet little spot where you can find to do your meditation practice, uh, that's the spot you want to do it in. You know, uh, I use uh, I have a 
a bedroom that I use specifically for meditation and for teaching. So I'm lucky that way. But maybe, you know, you're having a hard time finding a place, go in your car, find it, you know, drive into some place in a nice parking place, and then just you can sit and do it there. I mean, that's fine, whatever, you know, wherever it is, that makes sense for you. Uh, if you have kids, and you know, you want to have that time for yourself, Make sure it's not a time where they're going to come busting in and kind of trampling around. If you have animals, I mean, I have Rocky here and Rocky's like, you know, the guy, he's just always sleeping all the time. But if you have cats and you really want to work on the, uh, you know, the, your meditation, cats just love the energy for meditation. So they will be all over you and kind of nudging you and say, I want more of that mama, that, you know, that beautiful meditation, that energy. So uh, it, maybe it's good to kind of, you know, if you can find a place where it's not with a cat or if the cat will just sit on your lap and just chill, then that's good too. But anyway, so just being mindful for yourself, a place that makes sense where you can, this is your time to have a little bit of, you know, quietness. And uh, so, you know, just, just allow yourself to find that time and, uh, you know, the place where to do that. Um, so how about... For what, what are we going to wear when we're doing it? Well, just something comfortable, basically, just something that you feel okay in, not too hot, not too cold, um, and uh, something that's comfortable. Oh, there he goes. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, so anyway, so it's just something nice and comfortable and, uh, you know, that is uh, not tight. So yoga clothes is not the best thing to be wearing for meditation. Next thing is that how about what are we going to sit on? Okay, so uh, there's lots of ways to sit. And so I would say uh, you want to have your butt slightly raised above the ground. That's only that's my only one real stipulation, because you want your legs to be able to go flat down or just to be able to be above your your hips. So I use this. Well, I use that too, but I use this handy dandy little, uh, it's made out of buckwheat and you can get it online for about, I don't know, 20 to $30. And if you guys need a link, I can send it to you guys. Uh, anyway, so there's that. There's also something like this, which is, a. this is more of a foam, but it's like a little block. So that's another way. See, it's just lifting you up and then your legs are here. So that's that. And then there's this thing right here, which is a meditation mat. These things are really cool. So it's just like a nice, comfortable padded mat that uh, we, we set down and then you use underneath you so you're, uh, you don't get sore uh, knees or ankles because your ankles are down on the ground. And uh, we just, this helps to kind of cushion everything. So those are, those are some ways to do it. There's also like this little thing. It looks like a kind of like a church pew. It's like a little wooden plank thing. Your legs fit under there and you can sit on that. That's another way to do it. Uh, but also too, you can use, if you don't want to, you know, go out and buy this stuff, just use a couple uh, cushions or something to elevate your butt a little bit. Okay. Um, the other thing, too, is you're more than welcome to sit in a chair while you're meditating. OK, that is totally fine. The only thing that I stipulate with that, and this is going to when we do the actual stance, we'll get into this. But your back is not going to be touching the back of the chair while you're doing that. You're going to have a straight back, but sitting in a chair is perfect. And so that's why you could do it feasibly in a car you would just have a nice straight back while you're doing that. You're not using the backrest, okay? So that's, you know, that. And then is there anything else that I needed to say? Does anybody have any other questions about where, just these basic questions, when, how? I know the how is, you know, that's the next, uh, you know, 10 months we'll be learning how. Let me say this for you. If, what do we, uh, what do we expect? Well, I will say if you stay with me for the next uh, three to four months and, you know, the more that you practice on the on the your own, the quicker it's going to happen. But I would say within three to four months of consistent practice, you will be able to 20 minutes 
very like easily beautiful practice. I, I'm pretty confident you could get there. After maybe eight to nine months, I would say maybe an hour of practice that you could sit, go into meditation and go for it for one hour and be, you know, not, it wouldn't be a total battle going on. So that's kind of the, the range we're looking at. But again, it totally, de- it just depends on your own motivation and uh, how much extra practice you want to do. You could get this done a lot quicker. And also too, it depends on your, you know, your personality and a lot of other stuff. But anyway, so that's kind of one of the, the things to look at. Right before we're going to take our little break, I just want to say one other thing. With Taoism and the meditation I'm going to teach you, I am, uh, I really am a very systematic person. And uh, as people know that have trained with me, I break everything down super simple and as easy as I can to try to make it, you know, to, to, to help people to, to learn this stuff. Because I believe that learning, I believe simple is genius, right? So that you can, uh, have something very complex. And if you can make it easy for people to understand, then they're going to retain it and actually maybe use it. Okay. So with that being said, um, you know, oh, I for, no, I completely forgot what I was going to say, but anyway, simple is genius. And uh, so I'm very, you know, the systematic, my systematic approach, we will start from ground zero as we're doing today. And then I will uh, each week, we're going to add another layer and another layer and another layer. So you're, we're just gonna keep packing it on, pick, packing it on. So each week we'll slide into the next. And in six months, you're gonna be like, oh my God, I am so far uh, you know, forward. Um, and this is just after putting what, you know, layer upon layer on, okay? So um, let's go ahead and let's take about a three to four minute break. And then we are gonna get into the business of how to sit when we meditate. All right. Okay. How are we is it are we all back? Yes. So uh, does anybody have any questions before we start? Questions, comments at all? Just remember to unmute yourself before we uh, before you speak. No? Okay, good. That means that you're either completely befuddled or you're, you're following along with me. So hopefully it's the, uh, the, the latter. All right, so let's go into uh, our posture. So as I said before, seated, how we sit, uh, the butt needs to be a little bit elevated over the legs, but you can sit in a chair if you want to. The only two stipulations about sitting in the chair is I don't want your back to touch the chair unless you unless you have to. Okay, there's people that have situations where they need to lay back. That's quite all right. I have people in wheelchairs that are meditating, and so it, you know you you work to where your capabilities. So obviously, if you need to rest back, then rest back. That's fine. And the other thing would be if you're in a chair is that you would have your feet nicely firmly planted on the floor if you can if that's possible okay so the main thing as far as how we sit is not so important as what we're doing with our back the back needs to be nice and straight so here we're going to do uh like a little exercise and uh, I want you to imagine right now that we are taking from the tips of the ears, we're drawing a line up to the back of the head. So we're not in the middle, we're in the back. So for those that are, that are learning, this is just Wuji sitting. So I want you to imagine that there is a little thread attached to the back of the head, and that thread is going up into the air, and it's attached to your skull and your entire skeleton. So imagine your bones are floating up, okay? So imagine your spine is just being pulled up really nicely. So you feel all the little spaces, even in between the, the, uh, the spine, all the vertebrae are opening up and giving space in between. There's an analogy that if you could imagine a pearl necklace 
And if you are gripping the one pearl and allowing all the other pearls to lay down, imagine your head is that pearl and then allow the spine just, even though the, the, you're lifting the bones, you can feel that separation between the head and the rest of the body. So you're just allowing that space because we want for chi, for energy, however you want to call it, if it's just, if you just believe it's this biological electrical system, we just need that to be uh, flowing freely. And the way that we do that is by creating space within the body. And we do that by number one, by lifting the bones, okay, floating the bones. The next thing we want to do is sink the flesh. So everything that is not bones, so your skin, the fascia, connective tissue, the blood, all that stuff, we want to allow it to be heavy and sink against the bones. Okay, so as you inhale, you float the bones. My, my, my students from, the, from my Tai Chi class are like, oh God, here we go again. They're going to have to hear about Wu Ji all over again. So anyway, I'm always talking about float the bones and sink the flesh. But anyway, this is just, it's so important. But, so here we go. So we inhale, we float those bones. Feel your bones are light and airy. And then as we exhale, we allow everything to sink and get very heavy. All the squishy stuff that is not bone, we allow it to sink down to allow the stretch to happen. An analogy is if you had a coat hanger made out of bone, and then I put it a heavy wet jacket onto that coat hanger, that heavy wet jacket would represent your, all of the stuff that's not your bones and that would be hanging down against this. So your the bones are rigid and in place. That's your framework. And then everything else is very heavy and sinking against that. Okay, I hope you're with me. Now, how do I, what about my legs? How should my legs be? This was not the way I started. I was more like this when I started. So it just over time, you're going to get, you know, it'll, it'll open up just by the, the weight of gravity is pulling the, your legs down and apart. But I just want you to sit to where you feel comfortable right now. So, you know, if you, if you need to sit like this, that's fine. If you want to sit crisscross applesauce, that's fine too. It really, it, it doesn't, you know, if you can do the full Lotus, then, I mean, I can't do that and more power too, if you can, but, um, this is what I find comfortable. I bring one leg in. My, this is my right leg. I bring, tuck this in. And then my other leg, I think this is called the Burmese uh, lotus or something like that. And then I have both of my knees are nice and flush to the ground. But what, wherever you're at, this again, this was not where I always was. My knees for a long time were off the ground. And then over time, they gradually lower down just with the practice they came down so I don't want you to feel frustrated like oh my god I can't do a full lotus position that this is not the important thing how your legs are what is really important is how your back is that your back is nice and erect and that you have space in between we do not want to stack the bones of the vertebrae we don't want to feel like one vertebrae is smashing the other ones by this process of sung, which is releasing and floating the bones and sinking the flesh, we are creating space in between to allow this to happen. Okay, so everybody kind of allow yourself to get in that position. Take a few big deep breaths. And I want you to take a big three deep, big, big, deep belly breaths. So inhale, fill the tummy. So imagine you have a big ball in there, you expand, fill it up. And then just let it go. So feel that sinking down and don't be collapsing with the bones as you do this, because you're going to end up as a big squishy, you know, blob on the floor. We want to keep nice and up. Okay, another one. Inhale and exhale. 
And then one more. Good, okay. And now I'm gonna tell you a little story. This story is about a lady, a, a woman that had a pet monkey, okay? This was the most, the cutest little monkey you could ever imagine. If you ever seen those little cappuccino, the cappuccino monkey, cappuccino monkeys, he had a little vest on, super cute. And this monkey was the smartest guy. He would run around and they would just have endless fun together. This monkey, she would be sitting, you know, working, doing her daily routine. The monkey would run out and uh, he would find something cool and then he'd bring it back and he'd kind of show it to her. And she's like, oh, what that, you know, oh my gosh, what's this on you? They'd look at it, they'd both be checking it out and then they would get bored of it. And then the monkey would shoot off again, bring something. So it was this constant play and just, you know, they had this wonderful time together. One, one day the, the lady decided she was reading about the benefits of meditation. So she thought, oh, that sounds like a good thing. I'm gonna get a book about meditating. And so, you know, the Amazon box arrived, she gets the meditation books out, and she starts to meditate. So the monkey at first uh, found it very entertaining that she was sitting and not doing anything for a while, but that wore out in about five seconds. So the monkey is like, okay, what is going on? So the monkey ran out and, you know, brought something back and was kind of push it, pushing it at her. And then she was saying, no, 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 not now, honey. Let's just do this later. So he's pushing, you know, and so she's trying to fend off the monkey. Then the monkey, after becoming frustrated with not being able to do that, then he is thinking, okay, so what I could do is uh, he had this little feather and he would bring the feather and he would start to tickle her ears the tips of her, the, the tips of her nose, she has, you know, what she had the tip of her nose, uh, her, you know, so he would start tickling her. And, uh, you know, so she would start scratching and kind of like, would you cut that out? And uh, so eventually she just stopped doing it. And then he, you know, he said, okay, that's not working anymore. Now, what can I do? I know what I'll do. So he had a knitting, she was a knitter, and he had a knitting needle and he would start to jab her with the knitting needle and he would start poking her in the back, poking her in the sides, in the chest, in the tummy. And uh, of course, that wasn't very comfortable at all. So the woman is like, my God, what am I going to do? I love my monkey. I can't lock it away in the in another room because it goes completely insane. So I have to have him in here. But how can I, uh, you know, avoid this? So she was reading in the book and it was talking about feeding the monkey. So she suddenly thought, I know what I need to do. I need to feed the monkey to give it something to do while I'm meditating. So she had a whole box of goodies. She had a whole box of uh, bananas and other things. And when she started her practice, she would give the monkey a banana. The monkey would sit down and it would start to, it would like look at the banana, figure it out. And uh, so, of course, so this is what happened is she would use the, the banana as a way to uh, dis detract, distract the monkey. The monkey would eat and have a lovely time. And then when the monkey started getting bored, then she would give it something else. So with that being said, obviously, this is a, uh, you know, an allusion to what we're to our subject. So this the mind, our, our minds are like that monkey. Our minds are. Uh, there, it's wonderful. It's our friend. You know, it does what it's trained to do, right? The mind is always out finding stuff for us. It's always looking for entertainment, for novelty. And uh, so that's what it does. But when we start to meditate, all of a sudden, the mind will become very uh, upset about that. It will say, wait a minute, uh, you're shutting this down. The set, You're shutting the senses down. Uh, what, whatever happened to the games that we like to play. So this is going to be our first um, hurdle that we have to overcome is the mind. The mind plays tricks. One is with just thoughts coming and going. That's going to be one. The next one is going to be with the phantom itch the, in the nose, on the ears. You're going to start feeling like you've never felt so itchy in your whole life. And like, God, why didn't I, you know, what is going on? Then when that's done, and you might, if you're sitting in that position right now, you might already be experiencing that. 
and that's okay. If you're sitting, if you're still sitting there, you need to like, you know, just wiggle a bit, you can go ahead and do that. But the next thing is gonna be, you're gonna start feeling aches and pains in the body all over. And that's gonna be a very big discomfort too. So we are going to learn techniques that are like those bananas. And we are going to train, we're gonna give the mind something to be occupied on and then that will help to reduce these sensations that will come with the practice. So the first thing that we're going to, uh, my recommendation is, this is not going to be a very intense, um, you know, session about going into, you know, deep into meditation, but we have to get used to this posture. We have to get used to the idea of the, the spine being constantly erect the head being lifted up, the bones light, and the flesh being heavy, and just being comfortable in this position. And this is not a comfortable position for a long period of time. But I promise you, if you start to practice and start doing it, you will find that it becomes easier and easier. We are creating a new body here, a, a body for meditation. And if you wanna become a ballerina, you have to do certain things to, to earn that body, right? Sitting on, a couch, on the couch or like, you know, doing squatting 500 pounds is not going to bring you the ballerina body. Same thing if you want to be a weightlifter, you know, uh, doing the, doing, you know, dancing around, that's not going to do it. So you need to, whatever you want to desire to do, that's the, you have to put your energy towards that. So in order to get the meditation body, we have to, to be able to sit like this and, and eventually we will get over this monkey games, the, the aches, the pains, the mind, and the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the tickling and itching. It's gonna be hard at first. You might feel like I'm never gonna get through this, but you will, I promise you. So with that being said, does that make sense, you guys? And it might, might be you even are feeling that right now. So one thing that I suggest, this is the homework, is that th this is the good part of this posture, is that you can do it any time, get this over with, get this, the discomfort and all the stuff over with. So when next week or in two weeks, you'll be like, oh man, I can sit like this as long as I want. And the way that you do that is you don't have to be picking out a time five minutes a day to, to do this. If you're in the car, you can kind of maybe just allow the head to go up, get away from the back. If you're sitting in class, allow yourself to float the bones and sink the flesh. If you're watching TV, give yourself a little bit of time to sink the bones. So you can be watching something else and let the mind be distracted and all that stuff. That's another subject. But we first of all have to train the body to be able to handle sitting and being in this position. So we can do this at other times where we're not just completely meditating. You can do it watching TV, you can do it, you know, in other times. So that's a little bit of homework is when you get the chance, allow yourself to go into this posture, float the bones and sink the flesh and just Push it a little bit more every time you do it. Add another minute to it if you can. And it's going to, you start feeling those aches and pains and all this stuff. But, uh, you know, it'll, it will pass. Okay. So with the time we have, we've only got about three or four minutes. But I want to give you the first of the, uh, the, the bananas that we're going to use. Okay. So here we go. We're going to take a big, three big deep breaths. So float the bones and sink the flesh. Very good. Okay, so now what I'd like you to do is bring your mind. We're going to bring the mind to something in the body that is moving. Does what is moving in your body when we're sitting like this? Is your chest inflating and deflating? Is your stomach maybe 
inflating and deflating. What's going on? Usually people will start with the chest because the chest is the most notable thing that's expanding and contracting as the air is coming in and out. So this is the first banana. We are, the mind is going to be occupied in this, the breath occupied in the chest, the rising and the falling of the chest. So we're just, and we don't even have to really force the breath. We just allow the breath to do its own thing. And we just allow for the expanding and contracting. Okay, so just allow the mind to just sit and occupy that space. Now, there might be times where your mind is taken and you start thinking, okay, that feel, oh, that's so interesting on the chest. Um, oh boy, that reminds me one time when I was breathing and I was uh, starting to cough and, and then I was at the supermarket and oh, what do I have to get at the supermarket? So it's gonna get, lead you down. When you, when you realize, okay, my mind is going, do not get mad at yourself. Your mind is doing just what it loves to do. Just take the mind and say, okay, hold on, I'm gonna come back and then go back to the, go back to the breath. So don't get mad at your little monkey for doing what it's geared to do. It loves to do that. We're just retraining a little bit. First of all, this is the little banana that we use. There's other bananas, but this is the first one. So we just allow that expanding, contracting of the chest. And just noticing too, maybe you're feeling discomfort, feels like those knitting needles are starting to jab in the back, okay? Well, see how long you can go. If it gets to a point where like, I need to take a break, then by all means, take a break. Do what you need to do, but just maybe push it. If you can do three minutes right now of this seated practice with the head up, then good for you. Then try four minutes the next time, then five. Just add minute to minute after you're doing this. Okay, so this is the first practice is just getting into this posture, floating the bones, sinking the flesh, taking our three big belly breaths, and then allowing the mind to occupy the space where your body is most moving during the practice. So as the, the chest is rising and falling, you just allow your mind to occupy that space. And you just allow it to go. And so then you just, the tickle might come, you notice it, and then allow your mind just to go back to the chest. And it might be where it gets so excruciating, then you have to just scratch it. And that's okay too. But over time, you're not going to have to scratch. You're not going to feel that pain. It's all going to equal itself out and you're going to be able to sit like this for an hour. Okay, so this is just the first step in our long path together. All right. So before we end, do we have any questions or any other thoughts or comments? And remember to unmute yourself as we're, we're wrapping up here. So any anything else? Okay. All right. So just to let you know that uh, next week, I'm going to talk about our training, the Taoist for meditation, and uh, what it's going to entail. There's so many fun things we're going to be doing outside of just this kind of work where there's, you know, it's going to go into all these different areas and directions, and uh, it's going to be a blast. But anyway, so what I'd like to close this out, we're going to do a few things here. With that erect, the bones and the flesh sinking, I want you to inhale and bring your hands up and then exhale, bring it down all the way down as you exhale. Sink, sink, sink the flesh down. Inhale, bring it up and exhale down. One more. Exhale down, good. All 
All right, and let's go ahead and rub our hands together. Shake it out. And then we can just turn a little bit to the left or the right, turn to the left, stretch that out, roll the head. Okay, guys, well, thank you so much for coming. It was a pleasure to, uh, to see you and we'll see you next week. So remember, right hand, fist, left hand is covered and we bow. All right. You guys have a wonderful week. And uh, the, the movie, the video is going to be up in two, two, uh, two days or so. All right. Take care. Bye.